one of the prophetic messages that God gave Father Michel Rodrigue is the message he gave him on January the 3rd, 2019, where he talks about what will happen to the Church and explicitly to Pope Francis and to Pope Emeritus Benedict. Father Michel says, There have been sins long ago, people infiltrated in the Church, whose sole objective is to change the sound doctrine. An ecumenical mass will be introduced in the Church, formulated by different religious chiefs first, then by a committee of bishops, and as final step, this model of mass will be proposed to the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in Rome. A document of Pope Francis, Magnum Principium, came into effect on October the 1st of the year 2017, which granted authority to national conferences and bishops to include new terms, prayers or modifications in the ritual of Holy Mass, including the consecration for their countries. Many countries are now caught up in sin and problems of marriages because there have been many divorces and separations, and they have gone astray, says Father Michel, from the path of the Lord and there have already been many deviations regarding this subject. Each bishop interprets in his own way the church doctrine, and that is dangerous. If the synods in countries have the authority to perform and to alter the rite of the Mass, be assured that they will bring a bad offer to the Holy Father. If Pope Francis does not sign their proposals, which would mean rejecting what the Holy Father already gave them as authority to do, then that would generate a schism, and this is something that very soon we will see in the Church. Roma will only sign the document because they will feel that all of the authority has been given to the bishops to make changes in their own countries. This does not mean that the Pope signed the final document but he will be around trying to have it changed. And we can only discern when we listen during Mass that the words of the consecration will not be the same, says Father Michel. People do not have to attend those false Masses because it would be better to eat a soda cookie than to attend those false Masses but the bread will not be consecrated. This is the first sign of the crisis that is about to come. The Church will go through the same steps of Jesus' passion, death and resurrection. The Antichrist is already in the hierarchy of the Church right now. Father Michel says very clearly that the Antichrist is not Pope Francis. Father Michel says that the Antichrist always wanted to sit on the chair of Peter. Pope Francis will be like Peter the Apostle. He will realize his mistakes. He will try to bring the church together again under the authority of Christ, but he will no longer be able to do it. Pope Francis will die as a martyr. Then the Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI will appear, who still wears his papal ring. He will try to summon a council to save the church. I saw him weak and fragile, held on both sides by two Swiss guards. I saw him suddenly fleeing Rome due to the all-around devastation. He's hiding, but he will be found afterward. And I also saw his martyrdom. Pope Francis does many things with good intention, but he gives trust, relies on, and gives liberties to bishops who are dangerous. He realizes that it brings ratification, but it will be all too late. God sends his prophets to communicate to his people what is going to happen, his designs, his purposes, but only with prayer and fasting. You can change part of this prophecy, like the story of Nineveh, where God sent Jonah to warn the people that he would destroy it. But through their prayer, 
God had compassion and forgave Nineveh. The Holy Mass, its essence, will never disappear, nor the Church, because the forces of hell will not prevail against it. We will always find faithful priests and faithful bishops who will protect the true doctrine. This is why the work of God has entrusted to Father Michel is very important that of forming good and faithful priests for the end times. Brothers and sisters, after listening to this message from Father Michel, I have come to realize my view about Pope Francis. I have come to fully realize he is not after all evil, but rather he is suffering a lot, and he is in most need of our daily prayers for him. There are many Catholics who realize this too, and that is why they always ask us to pray for him and don't judge him. The messages from heaven has come several times to us, telling us to pray for the Pope, although he is contributing in the schism in the church, but behind the scene, there are dictators who enforce their will on him, which does not coincide with that of heaven. I would rather encourage everyone to pray at all times for the Pope, it is even proper to pray at all times for him, because one can earn indulgences just by pray for the Pope. Let every viewer take a minute, pause this video, and just say one Hail Mary for the Pope, you can just say a word of prayer for him on the comment session. There is another message given to Father Michel by Saint Gabriel. Before we listen to this message, let us give this video a like, and let us hit the red subscribe button under the video, just at the right corner of the screen. If you have once subscribed, you don't need to hit the subscribe button anymore. Let us now proceed. Father Michel, message from St. Gabriel, which was received on September 27, 2021. On the night of March 17 to 18, 2021, the angel of the Lord, later I understood that it was St. Gabriel the Archangel, came around 2.30 in the morning to tell me about the holy and great discretion of St. Joseph with the Holy Family and his role at the end of bad times. I say end of bad times to express a period different from that of Christ's glorious return at the end of time. This experience which I am going to relate, I call it a dream. Gabriel first presented himself as a splendid radiant light. Gradually, I made out the form of a being of light with what looked like wings of light. There emanated from his being a luminosity which brought both joy and very deep peace in God. It was like stepping into a part of the sky looking at it. Then his voice was heard. I come to reveal the discretion of Saint Joseph from the time I spoke to him until the day he was to leave the earth. His role as protector and guardian of the Holy Family was one of great serenity and great confidence in God the Eternal Father. To him, as to the Most Holy Virgin Mary, was given to be the first in the Most Holy Knowledge of the mystery of the Trinity of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The free acceptance of taking the Virgin Mary as his bride gave him the joy of an infused knowledge imbued with a living and fatherly relationship with Jesus, his Creator, his King and his love. This knowledge Joseph received from the love he had for Mary his bride and from the will of the Almighty Father. From that moment, Joseph took Mary to his wife's home and actualized the ministry of his love for Mary and the child. The drama which occurred at the time of the Savior's birth raises the consideration of his great authority which made it possible to preserve the child God and his mother from any omen that could have put the identity of the child at risk. Thus, the devil and his henchmen could have harmed Jesus and his mother. His strength and his love 
kept the devil and his acolytes at bay. Until the day of the birth of the child king, even Herod and his entourage knew nothing about it. Yet the sign was in heaven. The Magi was already walking to meet the child God and the shepherds, the smallest of the people, were instructed by the voice of the angels. At the moment when Herod wanted to kill the child God, I warned Joseph in a dream by the will of the Eternal Father to take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. He remained there until the death of the tyrant. Back in Nazareth, the Holy Family remained there during all the years of Jesus' growth. No one suspected who Jesus and his mother were. Joseph's discretion was perfect, so as not to attract the eyes of the evil one and thus hinder the plan of God our Father. Joseph's putative fatherhood covered the child and his mother in such a great way that no one can express or approach. Joseph's paternal tenderness was like the cave of the rock to protect the child and his mother from the untimely moods of this world. This discretion will continue in silence in prayer, in the daily work and even in the rest so as not to let suspect the existence of the Messiah of God. Joseph's obedience to doing the will of the Eternal Father with a humble and pure heart made him the most representative male figure on earth at the center of the Holy Family. His fatherhood and his masculinity were similar to that desired by God from the beginning of everything. So as St. Joseph protected the child and his mother, he protects the church in its historical growth in an even more solemn way in these times of yours. The present times require the lifting of the veil of God's discretion for St. Joseph and his role for the Church of Christ. Now is the time to review the words of the second letter to the Thessalonians hidden from the beginning of the Church. Indeed, the mysterious figure which holds back or prevents the manifestation of the Antichrist and his present domination must now be unveiled to enable all the righteous to understand the events which are taking place. You must stand ready and keep your lamps on for the manifestation of the Son of Man. Here is the sacred text of St. Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2. We ask you, brothers, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your minds suddenly or to be alarmed either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no one deceive you in any way. For unless the apostasy comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one doomed to perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God and object of worship, so as to seat himself in the temple of God, claiming that he is a God. Do you not recall that while I was with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who restrains is to do so only for the present, until he is removed from the scene. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and render powerless by the manifestation of his coming, the one whose coming springs from the power of Satan in every mighty deed and in signs and wonders that lie, and in every wicked deceit for those who are perishing because they have not accepted the love of truth so that they may be saved. Therefore, God is sending them a deceiving power so that they may believe the lie that all who have not believed the truth but have approved wrongdoing may be condemned. But we ought to give thanks to God for you always, brothers loved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for the salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in truth. Indeed, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. It suffices that the one who restrains it now be discarded. Today, I say it to you. The one who holds it back is St. Joseph. Through his prayer and his intercession, St. Joseph assists believers in a spiritual struggle 
for the defense of the faith of the militant church. With the prayers of the saints and souls in purgatory, that is to say the triumphant church and the suffering church, the assistance of St. Joseph and the Virgin Mary, constituting a shield of faith which holds back the Antichrist until now. Hear my words well. The cup of iniquity is overflowing, and soon a time will come for the church when the persecution of the righteous will take place. It is by the will of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that this year, 2021, has been proclaimed by Pope Francis, the year of St. Joseph. A great blessing of protection has been offered to you. During this year, you will be forced to make a choice. What presents itself as a saviour is just an illusion. Soon, the mark of the beast will be imposed on you to buy, to eat or to travel. The year 2021 is a year of discernment for those who want to be faithful to Christ. To all those who wish to follow Christ, St. Joseph will assist you but he must withdraw discreetly on December 8. By that time, and it has already started, all those who reject Christ find themselves entering into a force of delusion that makes them believe a lie, a social and planetary lie organized and prepared by the acolytes of the Antichrist. They form a false church, which is indeed the social body of the Antichrist. They are the ones who rule by fear, domination by communist and socialist ideologies. They are manipulating for a false universal brotherhood. They have infiltrated the Church of Christ with a view to disfiguring it and desecrating its sacraments. Everything falls into place until December 8. These evil acolytes organize themselves through the media and create a climate of suspicion, fear and denunciation. They must prepare for the coming of the unholy by organizing a world order where division and confusion will reign to the detriment of the truth of the teaching of the church. Scandals and accusations will hit the church everywhere. Movements that deny men and women will become the new judges of this social lie. Conflicts will arise in families, arguing the need for va- and the mark of the beast. Conflicts between nations will come to such a point that everything will seem hopeless. Hearts will cool. Consciousness will be bound and darkened by the sin that has pervaded everywhere. Even though the Antichrist terrors seem to suffocate the righteous and the saints, giving the impression of the death of God and the end of the Catholic Church, all of this is only an appearance. When St. Joseph retires, the Immaculate Heart of Mary will begin the beginnings of the triumph of her Immaculate Heart for her children and for the Church. The Church will go through the pains of a purification where the Virgin Mary will accompany her as Mother of Sorrows. Some of her children will be martyrs. They will wear the palm of the victory of Christ on the day of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. At the time when the Antichrist will appear, the time of the refuges prepared by the holy hearts of Jesus and Mary and the very pure heart of St. Joseph will sound. The refuges are the work of the three and a half years announced in the book of Revelation. They are the work of God. Small herd, do not be afraid. Look with the eyes of faith, hope and love. The shelters are under the special protection of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. This is how her Immaculate Heart wanted it. Can you not see the work of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary and Joseph? Everything you need to know has been said. Live in confidence to accomplish his divine will and repeat this prayer often. Jesus, I trust in you.